Hey everyone, Aaron from The Impatient Gardener. Join me today on a bit of a rescue mission. So I have been away from my garden for a week. Um, I've had somebody water in containers, but that's it. So everything else has been fending for itself. And if you've ever left your garden for any amount of time, you know that things go bad real quick, at least get crazy, especially in the heat of summer. So my approach to this is to put on the blinders and try to, to literally not look at anything and just focus on one area at a time. It's the way I keep from being overwhelmed in this process. Um, and I will not get it all done today, but I thought I'd bring you along to show you all the little things I do to sort of catch up and sort of the frankly, what it looks like uh, after you've been gone for a week. I have no idea. I've not looked at any of it yet. I've purposely sort of not looked at anything other than what was right in front of my face by the patio um, so that I could bring you along with it. So the first thing we're going to do is go in the vegetable garden because I figure vegetable garden, like you really got to stay on top of things there. So let's go catch up there first. Okay, let's go check out the vegetable garden. First of all, before we even go in, I think you can see that the clematis has fallen off the arbor here and it's quite pretty, uh, but it's right in front of your face, but it's blooming like crazy. This is little boss. Uh, that is just sort of formed a little chain right here in front of the door. But all right, let's get in there. So I think before I start jumping into doing things, let's just take a look around and see what the state of things generally is. Um, I think we'll see a lot of overgrown things. Like we've got lettuce going to seed here. Here's a whole bunch of beans. I had planted some more beans right before I left. That's these right here. I think there's peas in here somewhere. Oh, we do have beans on, so that's good. I had planted beets here. Boy, I don't think any of them are coming up. It's probably a little too hot for them. The cucumbers have gone completely rogue because they're running out of the beds this way. They're supposed to be going that way. The boxwood basil is eating up every available bit of space in this garden and eating out. Look at this, just getting all of my herbs. The zucchini is real tall. We'll have to go. I'm sure there's something hiding in there. Um, oh my gosh. Oh, I wish they had picked some flowers while they were here. But look, we've got gladiolas that have broken off. My first gladiolas ever. Oh, they're pretty. Guess we're going to have some bouquets. The apple espalier, um, I purposely hadn't pruned before I left because there's a bird's nest in the top there and uh, I didn't want to disturb them. Most of the tomatoes look okay. This one's flopped on me a bit here. Oh, and we've got squash going nuts over here. And the garlic, I knew the garlic would be pretty much ready to pick. And back here, everything's looking pretty good here. The alyssum's looking, I think, pretty good. Okay, well, ooh, look, a tomato. Let's eat a tomato. I earned that tomato. Here we got some issues here. Mm. Oh, and they walked right by the pond, which is, look, first lotus of the year, but oh my Lord, what has happened on the top. Actually, I think we're gonna start here with the pond, scrape this all off and get some fresh water in there. And then we'll start at the beginning. I have a barley ball in here, and I have fish in here, all of which are supposed to keep this from happening, but oh my. Look, I have some eggplants on. This is, what is this one? Asian Delight. I don't even like eggplant, but they're awfully pretty. I mean, I guess they're okay. Okay, bed number one, I pulled out some bolting lettuce. Pulled out the pea, which was a sugar snap pea. I tried these peas. They're way, they're way gone. So that's done. And just kind of organize things. Um, 
That's about it. I do have some room in this bed that I can plant something though. I'm just not sure what that's going to be. This is the Everleaf Emerald Towers basil here. It's such a good performer for me. I need to cut some of that. This is a different, this is the Perfuma. I think this is the Rutgers one. That really isn't doing much. I really need to make some room here for the thyme and the rosemary though because they're getting kind of choked out by all the basil in here. Here's uh, the parsley looking, looking pretty good. Let's go. You know there's a big zucchini scope in, in there. Let's go scope that out. Oh my gosh. We're gonna have to make some zucchini bread, I think. Here's what I got for zucchini. Four zucchinis, one very large, one very oddly shaped, two more appropriate for eating ones, and there's one that should be perfect for tomorrow night if for some reason we eat four zucchinis tonight. Now, Flowers are a big mess, but I think I'm gonna go to these two beds next. Um, look at that, look at that cabbage white butterfly on there. Just laying eggs all over my kale, which is still looking pretty good. Okay, that was a mess. You guys, there are four cucumber plants here total, two on each side, and it's Chelsea Price and Suyo Long. These are the cucumbers I harvested. All the smooth ones are Chelsea Prize, and these two spiny guys are Suyo Longs. So we're gonna have cucumber salad tonight, clearly. Um, there's a whole bunch, because there was not a single cucumber on a week ago, and all of these vines were neatly tucked into this trellis. So I did prune off some bad leaves. Probably take, there's more that I could get out of here, I think. I don't think we need all those leaves. It'll be just fine without them. Okay, I think we're gonna leave the flower beds for the end. But, um, so I, the water's clearer now. I basically scooped off a bunch of that goo and then let it run over the top. So we've got all fresh water in here now. I did just see a fish, so there's at least some left in here. So I am gonna fertilize the lotus. I use these pond tabs plus humates. And for this big one, I use like four at a time. And I try to do this like every probably two weeks. Lotus is growing in. Oh, that water feels great. It's cold. So this is the onions and garlic. So first thing I'm gonna do here is weed. Um, what I'm gonna actually do is just turn off the water to this bed for a bit and uh, let that garlic dry out a little bit more. Well, I do have well-formed cloves there, but definitely that paper is not dry yet. So at the very least, they need to dry more. I'd like to see a little bit more size on them. I don't know, I think we'll just keep an eye on them, but we'll eat that one tonight too. Next up, the squash bed. Be looking better than it did when I left, I'll tell you that, because there was nothing happening. Now I was trying to get this squash to sort of aim up this trellis. Let's see if we can achieve that a little. So in here, I have three kinds of squash, honey nut, butternut, uh, or like a baby butternut, and an experimental one. Um, and I don't know which is which anymore. So anyway, I just sort of guided these up this trellis very gently. And then the rest of them, I just tucked around the edges here. I did have some lettuce growing underneath here. A lot of times I'll plant some lettuce underneath the trellises. Um, it lasts for a lot longer, but it did, it, that one did bolt. And then we've got some nasturtiums here that are, I don't know, not looking great, but they're okay. Now, unfortunately with these tomatoes, I'm using the um, Florida weave method. I have no more twine. I ordered some, it's coming tomorrow, so I won't be able to tie anything in because I don't have any more twine. Uh, but we'll do our best to just sort of tuck things in for the time being. Interesting up here. This is the telltale sign to me of a tomato hornworm, but I don't see it elsewhere. But see how the whole top has been eaten there? That suggests to me there's been a hornworm around here, which I rarely see in my garden. 
So I'm going to start pruning off some of these leaves at the bottom. They're just starting to turn a little yellow. They don't look bad, but we don't really need those anymore anyway. And this way you get some more airflow in there. Some more light. It's not a bad thing. And look, we have a tomato. Dark Star. This is the one of the ones from Burpee that they sent me to trial. It's pretty. Lots of them on too. I'm kind of saving the best for last year. Okay, uh, before we get to the flowers, which is the very last thing, I'm just, the sides of the beds are really weedy. So let me show you what that looks like. Check out all the weeds. By the way, I have planted sunflower after sunflower after sunflower, and I think those are the only two that have so far made it. But I'm just going to do a quick weeding of these side beds, which were perfectly clean a week ago, and that's how quickly that all happened. Okay, I did bring some fertilizer out here. This is um, the insect frass fertilizer from Organic Mechanic. It is what it says it is. Uh, it should work on everything. Uh, it's new to me this year and I've been using it um, a little bit here and there, but it's a great organic fertilizer. So I'm gonna go around, give everything a little bit of a fertilize, including all the annuals, which have not had any fertilizer whatsoever this year. Uh, and just to give everything a little bit of boost here mid-season when they could probably use it. Thank you. Thirsty. Okay, now we can get to the fun part. Let's cut some flowers and see what we can make for bouquets. We'll call these vacation bouquets. Hold up just a minute. Been looking for some help just to find myself. Yeah. Been losing my focus like a thousand times before. Can't take this. Anymore. A lot of these are past their prime, so they won't last long in the vase, but they'll still be pretty for a couple of days. Okay, last but not least, we're gonna cut straw flowers and sweet peas. This is what you want to avoid with sweet peas. This is already setting seed, and they do slow down in their flowering quite a bit once they start setting seed. So just keep cutting them so they don't do this. Okay, so here's my sweet peas. We've got some other flowers to make a few bouquets with. Honestly, I could fits out here, fits, futs, futs out here for hours more, restaking up vines and neatening everything, and uh, I'm done. In fact, I was going to show you guys the rest of the garden too, but this took way longer than I anticipated, and uh, I think the video is getting kind of long. So, anyway, that's what my garden looked like after leaving it for a week. Everything that happens when you're gone is recoverable. One thing I've learned is that, you know, don't avoid going on a vacation because your garden, you don't want your garden to ever become the reason why you don't do something. So it's all recoverable and uh, you figure it out when you get home, right? So enjoy, go off, enjoy your vacation, uh, enjoy what you can find uh, and working around in your garden a little bit when you come home from vacation. But for now, I'm pooped, re-entry is hard, and uh, I'm going to go make some flower bouquets. You guys have a great day in your garden. And, you know, if you have to head out for your garden and go on a vacation, you should absolutely do that, too. All right. Thanks for watching. We'll see you soon. Bye-bye.